What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Success After Trauma. Today, we have a special guest, Iran Hefner. Iran is a friend of mine and a peer. We actually participated together becoming trainers in the modalities of neuro-linguistic programming as well as timeline therapy. Iran is a trainer in a few other modalities as well and an exceptional guy. He is a speaker, a coach, and a trainer. He's a master NLP coach and a master sales trainer as well as a master in hypnotherapy and timeline therapy. Iran helps people reprogram their mind to success by um, and he does that by creating a new neurological path in their unconscious mind and replacing unproductive patterns with more creative and productive patterns that will support their personal goals. With no further ado, let me get the floor to you, Iran. Thank you for being a guest on today. Tell us a little bit about yourself. First of all, thank you for having me. So my journey is, uh, you know, I always say that I was lucky. I have a good, uh, I had good life. I didn't have what so-called traumas in the childhood, you know, nothing uh, major. However, my journey was, actually, I did have a big trauma in my, in my childhood <clears throat> because I was an athlete in the Israeli national team uh, for judo, practicing for the Olympic Games. And um, one day, a car crashed into my dreams. And I found myself on a wheelchair, after a car accident, learning to walk all over again and on a long rehab. Mm. So yeah, most people will refer to that as trauma. <laughs> For me, I don't even think about it as trauma, although it was, although it was. And that put me on another path, on another path where I started to learn magic. And then I became a mentalist and that's what started my journey in the hypnotherapy uh, industry because to be honest i want to learn hypnosis for my shows but i realized you know the power in hypnotherapy and in timeline therapy and in nlp that i decided uh, to give it really a try how i can really help people to shift the perception about their previous traumas mm. um, and really live better life. I know it worked for me. It helped me a lot. And what I found out, and this was linked to my earlier age as an athlete, is that the state of mind and our thought is what really make the difference, is what really make the difference. And my example for that, I had a good friend back in my young age when I was still in the Olympic team. And he was in my team, not in the national team, but in my regular team. And in practice, we had good fights, you know? I mean, it was hard to, to win him. However, in competition, it was really easy to win him, you know? And my coach explained to me that it's only because I was focused and determined, you know? Mm. And that took me on later because I became a magician as part of my rehab. I became a magician. And before, when I finished the army in Israel and I decided to come to America to study magic and perform in Las Vegas, I went to my sensei the day before I left and I told him, sensei, I'm going tomorrow to America to do what you taught me. And he was looking at me and said, what are you talking about? I taught you judo and martial arts. You're going to do magic. I said, yes, sir. But you taught me to be the best I can, mm -hmm. no matter what I do. And I think this is a state of mind. And even in our training that we took together, <clears throat> I was in a different um, group than you. One of the people in my group told me, Iran, when you talk about things that you want to do, you talk differently than most people that I know. Most people that I know will say, I want to do that. I dream to do that. I have to do that. When you say something and I realize that pattern in you for many things that you say, you say, I must learn this skill. And as, as a matter of state of mind, it's a huge difference between somebody that must do something and somebody that want to do something. 
you know it's a, it's a big difference and i started to realize of course with my coaches and and with my teachers that the path that we're building in our mind will actually determine the results we're going to get in our lives mm. meaning that as a magician do you know what is the most famous famous magic word abracadabra <laughs> exactly abracadabra. Okay. <laughs> do you know what it means no clue so let me tell you it means i will create as i shall speak i like that that's what it means it's come from aramic okay and if we go even a little bit further you know there are two major energies in the world that we should utilize to our advantage even when dealing with trauma and with doesn't matter what we have in our life and those two energies one is the spoken word just like in magic by the way for those who believe in god you know in the biblical story god didn't came down to earth and did construction to build earth he spoke and it appeared and that's where we learned that speaking our thoughts is the most important things that we can do however it's also a little bit dangerous mm. because we might even get what we ask for <laughs> and if we don't know what to ask for then we might be disappointed that we actually got what we asked for it's not what we wanted but it's what we asked for and for uh, to explain that matter i have an, a joke may i say a joke yeah oh, please because this joke really explain perfectly the paradox of most of the people on earth that they ask something they get it and then instead of being to have a, a um, to be thankful you know and have gratitude towards receiving what they ask they actually complain about what they receive oh my gosh yeah. and the reason is not because they did not receive what they asked they did receive what they asked they just didn't receive what they meant or what they wanted and the joke goes like that there is a guy he came back from work and he's going to his jogging to his daily jogging and on the way back from his jogging you know in the last 10 minutes he start to walk to to get the breath back again and all of a sudden he see the 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 lamp from aladdin he pick up the lamp and genie is coming out from the lamp and he tell him thank you thank you thank you for releasing me you have one request whatever you want i'll make it happen for you on the spot but remember you only have one request so think good so the gentleman tell him okay give me five minutes is that okay so yeah take your time i enjoy the air and he's going back and forth say what i can ask for i have a good wife we are all healthy i have good kids I have houses, I have businesses, I have cars, I have vacation, I have money. What can I ask for? And then he come to Genie and he tells him, I know what I want. He says, you sure? That's what's going to make you happy? He says, yes. He says, okay. What is it? Tell me and I will do it for you. And he tells him, excuse me for my language, I want my dick to touch the ground. <laughs> Boom. He cut his legs. <laughs> the question did he get what he asked for oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah did he got what he really wanted no 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 <laughs> and this is the paradox of people you know in life that they don't know how to thank people and we'll talk about it more later in the program because if you will allow me i want to share my morning routine that really helped me to stay focused and creative and productive please i'd i'd love i'd love to hear it and i uh, man there's so much power in a morning and and a pm routine i mean even 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 weekly routines quarterly routines but man that morning routine you know really sets our day up i would love for you to share what you what you have going for your morning routine absolutely so before we go to that i really want to talk a little bit about what trauma and what fear is in general 
So fear in general is the most deceiving emotion that we have. Now, it's an important emotion because it's there to protect us. However, it's only protect us at the time of an event. Later on, it does not protect us. And the funny thing about fear is that fear is not real. The feeling that we get from that is really real. I'll give you an example. If my son, he's now six years old, but when he was younger, he called me one night and told me that I have a monster in the closet. I cannot go to sleep. So most people will go and turn on the light and show him that there is no monster in the closet because there is none. But here's the thing, the, the monster is not real, but the fear is real. So it will not help me to show him that there is no monster in the closet because the moment I leave the room, the monster will come back. So what I did, I actually introduced him to the monster and we gave her a name. And we actually had a little conversation with her, explaining to my son that she's there to protect him while he sleeps. Mm -hmm. So they became good friends and he didn't afraid from that anymore. Now, the funny thing is that a few days later, she stopped coming. And then he called me dad, why she's not coming anymore? I said, she went to watch other kids, mm -hmm. you know? So when we shift the, pers the perspective around something, our entire reality changes. And that's the beautiful thing about dealing with trauma because we cannot change the event. The event happened, but we can definitely change the perspective about around the event. And before, I wanna sh before I'm gonna share one personal story about a small trauma and one story of one of my client about a big trauma, we will see how it doesn't matter whether it's a small or big trauma because when, when someone goes through a trauma, at that point, the unconscious mind in order to protect our being generates new rules. And those new rules are there in order to protect us. Mm -hmm. However, if I went through a trauma at the age of six or 10 or 12, the rules that I generated back then was based on the resource that I have of a 12 years old boy or five years old boy. I know for sure that those rules are not serving any good mm -hmm. purpose for me when I'm 30, 40 or 47 like I am today. So changing the perspective and getting new learnings will definitely make the job in order to fade away the emotion and have a whole different new perspective about the event. It's powerful. It is very powerful, you know. I, I can tell you, let, let me share with you a small trauma that I had. And when I say a small trauma, maybe some people will not even consider what I say as a trauma. But here's the thing, when we communicate with someone, the communication is not what I say, it's what the other side understood. It's what the other side felt. And even as a small kid, if my parents forgot me in the kindergarten and came to pick me up 15 minutes after everybody already left, that is a trauma. For a little kid, it is a trauma. It doesn't have to be a rape or robbery or, or death or, or car accident, you know, in order to create the neurological part of a trauma. That's right. It just That's has right. to be something that someone felt unsafe, unsecured, or, or whatever negative emotion or that fear elicits. Now, well, and, and Ren, can I share? Can I? Do you mind if I? Please. Especially when we're when we're younger, um, when we're kids, and even into our young young adolescent years, we don't we we require we are dependent during those days during those years. So we require um, a secondary source of safety, protection, providing, so on and so forth. And and in a very small as an adult, if someone doesn't provide for me or someone doesn't make me feel safe, 
we can protect ourselves. We can provide. But as a child, though, like you said, those feelings that they get, like, oh my gosh, that is a neurological event taking place. Absolutely. Um, because, yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep going, keep going. I want to highlight that. So for me, a small trauma, like after my car accident, which was a big trauma, <laughs> and in magic, we say that big move covers small move, you know, so maybe the big trauma cover a little bit of the small one. Mm. But here's the thing, after recovery, and I got back to judo, and I went to do my first competition after the injury. I had fear that I never had before. And I lost in the first or second round. Now, my father, who used to come with me to all my competition, he was really, really close to me. And my sensei, they're used to me bringing medals from any competition, just depend on the color. And here I'm losing at the first or second round. And my sensei, of course, was very, very supportive and everything. But on my way home, my dad in the car, he told me a sentence that I'm 47 years old today. That's over 30 years after the event. And I still remember that like it was yesterday. It does not affect me anymore because I did the cleanup around it. But I still remember that like it was yesterday. And he tells me in the car, Elan, maybe you stop doing judo. You're not as good as you used to be. Mm. Wow. I can still have tears in my eyes when I talk about it. Yeah. Although it does not affect me emotionally like it used to. I think mm -hmm. just the age made you more, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> more open to, to crying and to emotions. And, um, but, but that sentence worked with me for a long time and it really changed my ways of behaving in high school, you know, to stop following what I did and start focusing on other things, which I'm not complaining because it brought me to a great, great places, you know, so I'm not complaining about it. But the, what I wanted to show is how one little sentence that a parent might say can really affect us when we grow up and can really shift the way we go, you know, the direction we're going. And when my parents got divorced, I was already 21 years old, you know, and I told my dad that in order to stay friend with him, which is very important for me, I need to talk about my feelings. I need to talk about what bothers me. I need to talk about how he hurt me. Of course, he did not remember the sentence. He remembered the day and the competition because he said, Elan, I was looking at you and you were suffering. People went on your leg. I saw that you suffered. So I said it from a point mm -hmm. of view that I really cared, not from a point of view that I want to hurt. But this is exactly the point where it does not matter what we say. It matters how the other side understands it. And this is a place where I would love to suggest to people even if you're not sure, even if you just think that you might hurt someone, go and ask for forgiveness. Go and say, I'm sorry. It doesn't take anything from your ego. It doesn't take anything from who you are. It actually makes you bigger, you know, to be able to go and say, sorry, I made a mistake. I should have not done that. I even tell to my kids, I have four boys. I even tell to my kids, it's okay if you are mad at your parents. However, it's not okay if you not come and share why you are mad. Because I'm a human being as well. Although I help people, although my profession is in NLP and hypnosis, I'm still human. I'm still making mistakes, you know. I'm not perfect. And I want you to address it when you feel that I did something or said something, you know, because I'm not always aware. And sometimes we're angry. Sometimes we have other emotion that controls us, you know, and mm -hmm. we need to be aware of it and say sorry when we need to. 
that's regarding to that. I love it. I love it. And it feels it, it feel it feels so good when you when you get when you when you as the trespasser when you get that closure um and 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 let that person know like hey I I violated I I failed you in that moment. I apologize. It feels Absolutely. so good. We're, like you said we're we're all humans. We we are bound to it. Absolutely. You know there, there was I heard a lecture about how important it is to say sorry to someone. It's not the apologies that is so important, but it's very important because it puts both sides on the same page, that they understand the situation and each one of the sides look at the situation from the other uh, side perception, perception, which bring us also some good learnings, you know, about how we can do things different in the future, mm -hmm. you know, and the brain, after all, it's a very complicated learning machine. It's always on the journey to learn. So we should allow it to learn. And just the same way that when a cup is full, if I will put more water to it, it will spill, it will not uh, get more water into the cup. That's the same way when someone says, no, I don't know, I know everything, I know this, I know this, I know this, or I don't need to do this, I don't need to do this, or whatever, because we block, actually, the ability of the mind to really get more information, you know, that might be useful in the future, you know, might be useful in the future. Learning is always good. Learning is always good. Yeah. And here's the thing. And I want to share this story that I had with one of my clients. She came to me as a referral. And as the first question, I always ask my client, why are you here? You know, what is the problem? What do you want to achieve from the meetings? And she said, you know, I have a business for like four years since I got fired from a different company and I cannot make money. I don't make money. I just take loans from family and friends and whoever I can just to pay bills. And since I'm a business coach, one of my hats is a business coach and I teach sales. I started to teach her some sales. But I saw that something does not really resonate. Something does not really go through. And she has really hard time to accept money to accept success. Mm -hmm. And I had to, to figure out what was the issue. Now, I have to share that she shared with me that she was raped when she was a little girl, mm. which is definitely a trauma, oh, yeah. a big one. Yeah. However, she also said that she's okay with that. She can live with that. She dealt with a psychologist about that and you know she's okay with that and when i asked her all my question you know to see how she makes the problem in her brain you know one of the sentences she told me oh i love my job i would do it even for free and i told her well guess what <laughs> that's the path that you are going you are doing it for free however the fact that I love my job does not mean that I have to do it for free. Mm. You know, I still have to make a living because I still have to pay a rent, a rent or mortgage and still have a car and still have food and all of that. So I still have to make money, uh, yep. even though that I enjoy my work. And then yeah. I started to ask her different question about her connection to money, you know, how she learned about money. What was the perspective of her parents towards money? They said that money is a bad thing or, you know, different things around that pattern. And she said, no, it was a normal family, not rich, not poor, but everything was normal. Nobody said different things or bad things about money. And then since I saw that we don't get anywhere, we, I suggested to do a light trance of hypnosis to get more memories. And as she go in the light trance, all of a sudden she tells me, Elan, I see something that I haven't saw before. So what is it? My brother who raped me 
paid me to shut up. Whoa. Mm, mm, mm. Whoa. Here is a direct connection why the unconscious mind does not want any money. Mm -hmm. The transaction that he had to make in order to get this whatever amount of money that it was is just not something that he's willing to go through again. And here is the rules that we talked about before that the brain is forming at the time of a trauma. And how it affects us, she was over 55 when she came to me. She suffered from this problem over 45 years. Mm -mm -mm. And since one of the prime direction of the unconscious mind is to protect us, one of the things that he does is repress the memories. However, at a certain time, and that's why it's called middle life crisis, at a certain point, all those memories are coming up, they're looking for resolution. Mm -hmm. And if we don't provide resolutions, then those emotions will start to appear as chronic pain, it will start to appear as muscle pain. And if it gets even worse, scientists show today that it causes even cancer and other diseases, you know, for God's sake, that it all comes from those repressed negative emotions that never came to resolution. And the beautiful thing about the modality is that both you and me are part of it. <clears throat> is that we can actually clean the emotions without mm -hmm. tapping and talking and bringing the person back into the trauma. And this is the amazing thing about using the tools that you and me are using in order to help people. Because a lot of people have hard time to relive it and talk about it again and again and again. And let's face it, talking about it again and again and again does not really change anything. In order to clean the emotions, we need to replace it with something else. And this something else that we're going to replace it with would be learnings. What we could learn from those events. The learning which will allow us to let go of the emotion easily and effortlessly. The unconscious mind will preserve the learning. So if it will need it in the future, they will be there. And once we clean the emotions and the perspective around this rape and about this payment for the rape, then I kept teaching her how to do sales for her service and product. And all of a sudden, <laughs> she strived, you know? All of a sudden, she sent me a letter, Iran, thank you very much. Because I'm paying back loans and I have money to pay my bills. And I'm not struggling anymore. And if you ask me why I do what I do, this is the reason why I do what I do. To get those kind of communication for my client that I really made a big change in their lives. Two weeks ago, I was getting a call from someone who used to be my client. And he tells me all excited, Iran, thank you, thank you so much. I said, what happened? I said, nothing. I'm <laughs> just going through the best time of my life and it's all because of the work that we did. And That's I was awesome. so happy to hear that because in hypnosis and in time and therapy, people usually forget, you know, what happened in the therapy. And the fact that he remembered and gave me some credit for the change, it felt amazing, you know, and, and this is really the reason 
why I do what I do. Because even if people don't call to thank me, I know that I made a major shift in their life. And there's nothing more fulfilling for me than that. I love what you said about people. Um, I, I'll even say it a little bit. I'll even suggest a little bit different. But, you know, um, you said people forget what happened in session. I, I'll even suggest that they just don't know what happens in the session. For sure. That they can't because it happens at an uncon. It's, it's wild. It's so cool. Your client, they're like, they're like, well, we didn't get done. And like, okay, well, go <laughs> go live a little bit. <laughs> yes. You know, I have a client, and that's really amazing because we're doing the sessions on Zoom, and it's all recorded. And we do timeline therapy, and we do hypnosis, and I have it in recording that he goes to previous lifetime and come back from learning from previous lifetime. You know, if you read the book Many Life, Many Masters. I haven't have read, read that. No, no, I haven't. Oh, no, it's no. a must. It's a okay. must. Okay. Many lives. Write many it down must. right now. Yep. So I felt like I'm the author of the book, you know, <laughs> because the book is literally a transcription of a session that somebody goes to previous life and come back from, from different learnings from previous lifetime. And when I talked to this guy after, like two weeks after, and I tell him, how do you feel? Say, I feel I feel amazing. I said, what's different? What's changed? He said, I don't know. I cannot point what's changed, but mm -hmm. everything changed. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. but everything changed. And, and you know, th this is the reason why we do what we do. This is the reason why we do what we do. Mm -hmm. That's it, man. I love it. I, and I, I, I love something else. Let me tell you something else. I just remember that. My sister in law. Her daughter, she used to bite her nails. She was like 16, 17 years old back then. She used to bite her nails all the time. And then one day I came to visit and my sister-in-law tells me, Iran, why don't you help her? Do some hypnosis to her, you know? Make her stop biting her nails. Mm -hmm. And I said, do you want to? She said, yes. So, okay, let's do it. So we did it and we did two sessions and she stopped biting the nails. And then like six months later, they come over to a family dinner and she has like a nice long nails. And I ask her, are those yours or they're built? No, those are mine. Really? When did you stop biting your nails? I said, oh, a few months ago. I said, that's amazing. How did you stop? Oh, one day I just decided and I stopped. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. And then, and then her mother told her, her mother told her on the table, don't you remember that he did hypnosis for you for that? Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> that is so awesome. That is so awesome. Yeah. So, so tell us, dude, I got to, I got to get into, um, tell us about your morning routine. What is it okay. that you do each day that sets you up for success? So my morning routine actually have five steps really easy steps step number one i will use the two major energies okay that exist in the world one of them we talked about it before is speaking and the other one is gratitude so i will start my morning since i'm in california most of the days I can do it outside at the sunny on the, on the backyard. But even if it's not, then I do it inside in the house or in the office, it doesn't matter. And step number one is I just focus on things that I'm thankful. Things that I'm thankful in my life. And in the beginning, it's really difficult. So in the beginning, we really thank for the very obvious stuff, like my health, my kids, my family, you know, stuff like that. But the more you do it, it starts to put you on a focus on a lot of other stuff that are good in your life, you know? And just putting that into the focus, I think make you look at your life, at your own life as something precious. Mm. So that's step number one. Step number two is coming from a different 
energy. And before I tell that, I will just tell a little story. Is that okay? Please. So I pick my kids from school and my little one loves ice cream. So as we go home, we have Baskin Robbins on the way home. So sometimes we stop to eat ice cream on the way home. And one day we went home directly. And then my son told me, Dad, why didn't you stop for me for ice cream? I looked at him and I said, you didn't ask. How should I know? If you ask, you know I would. So that's my second phase of my morning mm. routine. I'm talking to God or the universe, everybody with their beliefs, okay? What is it that I want? I'm asking him specifically for things that I want. Whether it's in my business, whether it's in my personal life, whether it's in my relationship, whether it's my money situation, it doesn't matter. I just ask him specifically what I want. And my son was amazed one day, we went off-roading with the motorcycles and he said he needs some new thing. And then my wife called and she said she needs something. And then my other son called and he needs something. All the thing they need was about 10 grand. So I told my son, look, I took off the helmet and I go in the middle of the field over there. And I look to the sky and said, daddy, I call him daddy. You, you just heard my son want that. My other son want that. My wife want that. I don't need anything. I just need the ability to give them what they want. Within 15 minutes, I got four calls, total jobs, 11,000. Mm. That's how you manifest things into your life. You are grateful about them and thank in advance before they even happen. Because if I will tell you, for example, hey, get me a glass of water. Or if I will tell you, Greg, can you please hand me the glass of water over there? Isn't the second way will almost make you feel compelled to give me the glass of water. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the first way will also make you feel that, excuse me for my language, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and this is exactly the thing. We need to ask in advance and say thank you in advance also for the universe and be specific, just like in Smart Goal, be specific. What is it that I want? And here on my fridge in the office, you know, I have my goals written so I can see them every day and stay focused on that. Mm. So this is the second phase of my morning routine. The first one was just say thank you for God for everything that I have or the universe. The second step was to ask specifically, what do I want? What do I need help? What do I need assistance with? To be very specific. Now the third one. The third one is thanking to the universe or to God, everybody with their beliefs in advance for actually giving me everything that I ask at step number two. So I thank in advance that I already received what I asked in step number two. I love it. I'm writing these down. And then comes step number four. Step number four is, I think, the key for success. Because at step number four, I'm now closing my eyes and imagining that I got what I asked for. I have it. And now I reverse engineer in my imagination everything that I had to do in order to be there. Not mm. what God had to do for me, not what the universe, not what my boss, not what my wife, nothing. What I had to do in order to get what I wanted. And I break it down into little action. What I have to do today. I love this. And then number four and eh, number five, step number five. I put up some music 
usually it's the song of Sia, Unstoppable. And I just start to jump, do stretches, do some push-ups, and do like 15, 20 minutes of an exercise to run the blood in my, in my mind, in, in my body. And then when I finish that, I really feel unstoppable. Mm -hmm. I really feel unstoppable. Dude, I'm, 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 I'm implementing this. I'm implementing this. I love it. I love it. That's powerful. Hold on one second. Mm -hmm. Dude, that's incredible. And I, I love what you, you put that that's that's huge the biggest piece for me you said it, it's step four biggest one right biggest piece for me the biggest my personal just want to share this my personal download right there was imagine having it like i got that step like asking for what we want being generous um being thankful being grateful thanking for what we will receive in the future that we ask for like tracking on all those of course i can do better on those when you said imagine and having it i'm like yeah that too got it and then you said, because we can imagine having it, well, you, but you said in your own words, but I, what I took away, because I can imagine having it, then I can imagine what had to happen to get there. Exactly. Oh, shit, there's all our answers. Yes. That's powerful. That's powerful. And going through that imagination process, you and I know, listeners, you guys will have to take us at face value if you're not already on that level and, and just experience it. But imagining all the steps that had to take place you're neurologically writing that into your body and into your future. And um, not just that, when you also say it up loud, and that's why all the things that I mentioned, I speak up loud. I don't speak in my heart. I don't speak, <clears throat> you know, low volume. I speak, just like we said, abracadabra. I have to bring it out to the universe, <clears throat> to God, to whoever listens, in order for them to know what is it that I want. I just to run the thought in my mind, it's just not enough. That's incredible. So Ran, let me ask, dude, thank you for everything you shared today. This is a powerful, powerful episode. I know that the listeners checking this out are going to have change. I know that there's gonna be seeds planted in people. And like we talked about, they might not realize those seeds today, but five years down the road, for some people, two weeks down the road, they're gonna be living a different experience just because they listen to this podcast. I appreciate so I want, everything you shared. Go ahead. I want to say something just before we finish. I know we are short of on time although we both know we can spend another two hours speaking. But here's the thing. Everything that you and me are teaching, everything that you and me are saying, everything that you and me are, the way we're relating to things and what we give to our listeners and to our audience is just like to give a membership to the gym. Mm. If you don't go to the gym, you will not see the results. <laughs> Just holding the membership in your pocket is not enough. People tell me, I know everything that you say. I say, I also know that to go four times a week to the gym will make me fit and in great shape. How does this knowledge help me if I don't go to the gym? Thank it you for not. saying that. It does that not. That is powerful. And here, I want to share something, and that will be the last thing. And it's the four rules of magic. And the four rule of magic will make you better if you follow them in everything that you want to do in life. Rule number one of magic is practice. Rule number two is practice some more. Mm -hmm. Rule number three, it's the most important rule Practice until you make it perfect. And then rule number four, keep practicing. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And if it. you apply those rules to life, you're going to be successful in whatever it is that you do. You can't not. You yeah. can't not. Yeah. So let me ask you this, Aaron. If people, um, the listeners that checked us out, and, and, and for those of you listening us on, um, on one of the podcast streaming platforms, you can go to Success After Trauma, the YouTube channel, and you can watch the video as well. Aaron, for the people that want to connect with you, that want to hear more about your journey, or maybe they want to work with you, 
what's the best way for them to reach out to you or to get more information about you and how you serve? So the best, I serve all over the world because I work through Zooms. I work in personal. I work with businesses and personal uh, people, you know, individuals. The best way to reach me is either through my website, which is usenlp.com, you know, usenlp.com. By the way, this name can be used on Facebook, on Instagram to find me. Um, on Google page, I just changed it because I'm working on a new uh, website, which will be called the State of Mind Academy. So on, you, on Google, you will find me as the State of Mind Academy. Um, I can share my phone number. Is that okay? Please, absolutely. My phone number is 424 999-0919. And all the platforms are available, you know, just look at Ran Hafner or use NLP and you will find a lot of material about me online. Uh, and I'll be more than happy, you know, to help anybody that really wants to create a shift, you know, in their life and start to live the life that they want without reading hundreds of self-improvement books because the majority of self-improvement books are great, but it's really hard to take action without somebody that shows you the right path. Absolutely. So I hear a lot of people that says, oh, I read it in this book, I read it in this book, but then it just fades away. And if you don't really start and take it and make it the practice in your life, then it will fade away. And that's why coaches are for to help you, you know, to help anybody to move forward. Me personally, I have two coaches on a regular basis that I pay for. And the reason is because I learned something very unique from each one of them, you know. And since I'm a coach and I believe in the system, how can it be that I will not have a coach, <laughs> you know? Beautiful. Ron, thank you for being on. And to all the listeners, until you catch us on our next episode, be great. It's already in you. Oh.